that I want to start with today is this idea of matching someone else's energy. And I'm going to use that as the introduction because as we go along here today and I teach this teaching to you, whether you get it or not is going to be dependent upon whether you match my energy or not. So it's going to be about aligning yourself, your mind, and your energy with my energy and my mind. In other words, my mind is teaching a particular teaching that has a particular energy associated with it. And if your mind can match my mind, then you can begin to download the teaching, if that makes sense. That's one way of saying it. If you don't download the teaching, then you may intellectually be able to regurgitate the teaching, but you don't have the energy that goes with the teaching. And if you don't have the energy that goes with the teaching, that's like eating the chocolate cake, but there's no flavor with it, <laughs> right? Who wants to eat chocolate cake that's bland? Nobody wants to eat chocolate cake that's bland, right? We want to eat chocolate cake that has flavor with it. And we want to taste the richness and the density and the light texture of the cake. Okay. Now, on the opposite side of that beautiful, delicious story, in duality, we always have the opposite story. So the opposite story would be mm, uh, someone is in a bad mood and you don't want to catch their bad mood, okay? They have bad vibes and you don't want to catch their bad vibes. So unfortunately, this topic has not been taught much or talked about very much in elementary school, middle school, high school, college. It hasn't been talked about. And it really takes a side study such as this to begin to open the doors to this kind of teaching. And what I'm going to share with you right now, just as an introduction, but it's going, we're going to build upon it as we go forward today, but what I'm sharing with you right now, to me, is priceless information, especially if you were to begin to practice it and you were to begin to embody it, it would radically change your life. And when you think of protecting yourself energetically, which is a subject that all healers are interested in, because all of us that are healers and work with other people's energy and so on, and even our family members and uh, people in our lives, and friends and so forth, being around them and being in relationship with them can be challenging, right? You're trying to work on your stuff. Maybe this other person is not working on their stuff as much, or they have certain issues, or they have a bad mood. You don't want to catch the bad mood, all of these kinds of things. So the way that you're taught and the way you have been taught from the time you were a child, the primary way in which you've been taught was monkey see, monkey do. So your parents, so for example, if I use my own family, family as an example, my dad never sat me down and said, let me teach you how to not breathe. But I learned how to not breathe because I matched his pattern of not breathing. All right, so... You walk into a kitchen, so we're going to finish with a little story, and then we're going to have a little practice from right where you are, seated or standing, whatever, and we're going to have a little practice, and we're going to attempt to do something called elevating consciousness, but just a little bit more about the background. You walk into the kitchen, and somebody's in a bad mood. Those of you who've ever been driving home to your house, and someone was waiting for you at home, and they were in a bad mood... Did you know it before you got home or did you have to get home to find out? A lot of you knew in the car on the way there. Some of you didn't know 
maybe your intuition wasn't as uh, great, let's say, as someone else's is, it's okay. You come home, you realize, oh my God, this person's in a bad mood. How long did it take you to find out? Well, as soon as you walked in the door, most people find out before the person even opens their mouth. Why? Because you feel it, it's energetic. The primary form of self-defense that you've been taught, because our subject today continues to be with this particular program, the peaceful warrior, medical Qigong for the peaceful warrior. Being a peaceful warrior is not a pacifist. It's not doing absolutely nothing. And it's, uh, it has a certain element of protecting yourself and having boundaries and being powerful and being kind, being peaceful, uh, tending toward peace, but at the same time, uh, speak softly and carry a big stick because just in case you need it to poke someone with or set a boundary and say, please don't cross this line because I don't like that energy, whatever the case may be. All right. So you go into the kitchen, you match the other person's breath unknowingly because the primary form of self-defense that you've been given is to hold your breath. Let me give you one more example and then a practice. So here's the other example. You walk into your client's office. A lot of you are practitioners. You walk into your clients. You walk into the office. The client is in there. Okay. And uh, before you even get in there, you start getting a headache. Uh, you come in. You've never met the client before. The client's brand new. Let's just say as an example. And the client says to you, I have a really bad headache. You go, oh my God. I have a really bad headache. You start trying to treat the person. The person begins to use manipulative tactics, which some people do, a lot of clients and patients do, because they're trying to steal energy rather than just kindly receive it. And you're getting more and more of a headache. You can't seem to shake it off. All right, let me tell you the quickest way to have your headache get worse, and let me tell you the quickest way to change the headache and then we're going to use that same practice to protect you in your relationships and also to elevate your consciousness. You will find out in this program that both of those things are paths to personal freedom, independence, and inner peace. So here it goes. It goes like this. You walk in there. The person has the headache. If your breath is held out of self-defense, which is what most people do. You hold your breath unconsciously, unknowingly, out of self-defense, out of protection. It happens all the time. That is the quickest way to take on your client's energy. That is the quickest way to take on negative energy. And let me tell you why. Because their breath pattern I'm just going to say this as a punchline just so that it's uh, accentuated and exaggerated. Their breath sucks. So if their breathing pattern sucks and you match their breathing pattern, then you begin to match their energy vibration. So if you ever want to match someone else's vibration, someone else's mood, just match their breathing pattern. And if you ever want to match someone's breathing pattern, just hold your breath as your primary form of self-defense, psychic protection, and you're automatically going to match their breathing pattern. And when you do, you're going to have their headache. And you're going to say, I don't know how I ended up with this headache. And although the book Celestine Prophecy that was written maybe 20 years ago is a very uh, surface level teaching of this kind of idea, that book, if you've never read it uh, or read it years ago, it's worth another read and a reminder uh, because there is an exchange of energy that happens where people are trying to feed off of your energy rather than the universal energy, which is why we're going to be practicing Qigong today and teaching you how to feed off of the universal energy. Because if you're not feeding off the universal energy, I'm going to tell you a secret. If it's not a secret to you, it is to most people. If you're not feeding off of the universal energy, if you're not getting energy through meditation, 
Qigong practice, yoga practice, martial art practice, etc. cetera, uh, painting, calligraphy, art, you know, music. If you're not getting energy from those kinds of places and channeling that energy and bringing that energy in, then whether you are aware of it or not aware of it, there is an unconscious need and there's a literal need, but there's also an unconscious desire to steal energy from other people. And so consequently, in your relationship dynamics, whether you want to or don't want to, you end up in power struggles with people in the intersection. You end up with power struggles with people at work. You end up with power struggles with people we just lost some lighting. Give me just a moment. Okay, we're back on. So you lose, uh, it's interesting, right? The, the lights just went out for a second and it demonstrates a loss of connection. Connection is now back. <laughs> the, the lighting is now back. If you don't get that energy from your Qigong practice, if you don't get that energy, again, from your yogic practice, your breath practices, your meditation, etc., you're setting yourself up for dysfunctional relationships. I don't care what kind of relationship it is, and name any kind, personal, friendship, you know, uh, business, lover, um, uh, you know, uh, random person in the street, uh, somebody at the grocery store, etc., so you have to find a way to uplift the energy and match the breath of something greater. So let's take this on a bare bones, very basic, and uh, work from right here with a technique. So bare bones basic is this. I told you and I exaggerated it just so your mind can like wake up and hear it. Uh, average person's breath patterns suck. They don't breathe. They're holding their breath. So we don't want to match that. If you match that for, like you go into a room with somebody, you begin to match their breath. Well, within seconds, you're matching their energy. Now you're matching their, ener your, their energy. You sit there for one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, what happens? It gets worse and worse and worse, right? You feel more and more uncomfortable, take on their headache, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? All right, so you don't want that to happen. So first and foremost, you need a practice to practice at home. This is not necessarily a practice that you do in front of other people or with other people uh, in the presence of other people. Maybe as you become more advanced, you do that. There are other ways to do it, but I give you this as a basic practice. You got to do it at home before you're ever going to be able to kind of manage it in the presence of other people. So this is exaggerated and it's obvious, which is why, number one, you do this at home. You don't do this in front of the client. Later, I'll show you sneaky ways you can do it in the presence of a client, so on and so forth, how we can use the concept. So here comes the technique. You can stand for this one or you can sit for this one. Doesn't matter. I'm going to stay seated just so I can keep your view as is. But if you want to stand for it, please feel free. I want you to make your spine upright, though. I want you to sit upright. So if you're seated, kind of push your notebook to the side and just sit yourself upright because you want to change your posture. So you hear all kinds of things about posture out there, sit up straight, all these kinds of things. In Qigong practice, yogic practices, posture is very important because it has everything to do with the qi flow, all right? And qi flow has everything to do with the consciousness, the level of consciousness that your mind is sitting in. So one technique that I'm going to give you today to elevate your consciousness, literally lift your energy up out of the basement of the lower chakras and come up higher in your energy centers and come up higher into your spine is this ancient practice called breath of fire. There's different ways to do this one. I want to show you uh, a beginning way to practice this. And by changing your breath pattern and breathing something very different, it's going to change the energy. So just for a minute or so, listen to me do breath of fire. I don't want you to do breath of fire, but I want you to see if there's any change in your own energy because you and I are having a conversation here today. And so far the conversation's kind of tense. 
And why is the conversation tense? It's because of the subject matter. And what is it about this subject matter that causes you to feel tense? Most people don't talk about it. As I say often when I teach these kinds of programs, this is the kind of conversation that nobody wants to have at the dinner table unless you happen to find me in a corner and realize that I'm a Qigong teacher and you start having this conversation with me. Nobody at the table wants to have this conversation. Why? Because people don't like their emotions. People don't like their moods. They like to keep them hidden, even from themselves. And so consequently, nobody wants to talk about it. But let me tell you something, that is a big problem because not talking about it, not being aware of it, trying to repress it and suppress it is not working for humanity. It's not working for you personally, perhaps, and it's not working for humanity as a whole because everything's being kept hidden, it's kept in the subconscious, but then the problem is, is you say, oh, I don't understand why I have this problem with the person at the grocery store. I know exactly why you had the problem with the person at the grocery store. But you may not know, now you know. Because if you hold it in your consciousness and your breath and your mood and your energy, that's what happens. So just imagine you're having a conversation with somebody like me who wants to take you higher. And in the middle of the conversation, they're talking about President Trump and Obama and whoever else. And they're having this conversation about politics and so on and so forth. And then all of a sudden, right in the middle of the conversation, they just go like this. So the first thing is, is a lot of people would say at a regular dinner party, they would say that's not very PC, that's not politically correct, and what are you doing? And if I were to continue to do that, whether I was in the room with one person, two people, five people, 10 people, 50 people, 50 people may be a little harder, but uh, you know, 20 people, whatever, and I'm sitting there at the dinner table and I start doing breath of fire like that and I pick a mudra like this and I keep focusing on that and I keep breathing, how long do you think it's gonna take before I have the entire table's attention? They're going to be placing attention on me and in using that breath and in changing that breath and in using a particular mudra, for example, I'm literally changing the energy dynamic. And the longer that someone else sits in that energy dynamic and doesn't do something to combat that or they don't know how to quote unquote defend that and stay out of that better vibration, they're going to be pulled into that better vibration unless they leave the room. So that's just a couple of ideas there. So the technique, just to start with, just to begin with, there's a lot of different things we can do with it. It's in and out through the nose. And for many of you, it's gonna feel very weird at first, unless you've done Breath of Fire before. It's weird. And the reason it's weird is because of what's happening in your own emotional body. And depending on how much stress and tension and resistance is in the emotional body and how stuck the chi is, that will determine how uncomfortable it feels, how weird it is, how easy it is to do the breath or how difficult it is to do the breath. So this is a little background. So right where you're seated, first just the breath and then we'll add the mudra. So it's in and out through the nose. It goes in, out, it just goes in, out. No emphasis on either one, just in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. And then some of you, especially beginners, you're gonna to need to take a break. So then just inhale, deep inhale, and then exhale. 
and then go back to a breath where you go in through the nose, out through the nose, in through the nose, out through the nose, and then inhale, exhale. And it might be helpful to place your hands on your lower belly to see if your belly is moving up and down, up and down. And yes, you're going to feel the tension of this conversation in what modern, modern day spiritual teacher Eckhart Tolle calls the pain body, which I call in my book, the emotional pain body, because it's the emotional body. It's also the pain body, whichever you want to call it. You're going to feel it in there and it, it, it hurts. It's like uncomfortable. But what if you were to know that that has everything to do with your relationships? What if you were to know that ha that has everything to do with who and what you're bringing into your life? Then you might be more willing to kind of push through some of that. So once you get a little breath of fire going, a good breath of fire, if you desire, you bring your hands to your heart center because this concentrates your mind in the center of the heart. This is where we want the energy to come. And then one more time, you go back at it. It's in and out through the nose. And just do it with me for a minute, or you can watch me do it. We're going to have at it here for a minute or two. <laughs> 